So I decided I wanted to buy a 3D printer and after this whole experience I decided I wanted to put kind of a video together of like a noob helping a noob buy a 3D printer. I kind of wanted to go through all the different things I went through and thought process and I spent quite a quite a few weeks going through and looking at different printers to find out like what exactly I wanted. And that kind of goes in contrast to this little micro 3D printer that I bought like was two years ago at a charity auction. This thing right here is just way too slow. It is, um, it just doesn't have the print volume that I wanted. I wanted printed stuff that was much bigger than what this thing could do. So, you know, I kind of ended up with something that wasn't really all that useful for me at least. So I wanted something that could really print things reliably and consistently that could print things that were much bigger like um, enclosures for my uh, PCBs that I make and even some mods for my computer and I really wanted something a little bit bigger. When I first started looking through all these printers um, I saw a lot of different things and I kind of wanted to put like a whole list together of like the, the top five suggestions that I have for other newbies going through the same experience of buying a 3D printer and what you should do when you want to buy the 3D printer. So two large names came up you know pretty much every community and all the research I was doing it was uh, Creality and Prusa. So Prusa is kind of this, um, it's kind of the best quality 3D printer that you can get for about a, a thousand bucks. At least that's what, from my understanding, what I was doing when I was doing the research. So uh, pe people really love the printer. It was created by this guy named Prusa in the Czech Republic. And they not only made a good quality printer with quality parts that are really, that are not clones of, of you know, or copies of other parts, but they use, you know, actual real parts from those companies. And what they do is they make a they make a product that is very good, and they it seems like a lot of time QAing it, which might not happen with a lot of the other you know cheaper printers. Additionally, they seem to have put together a whole ecosystem. They made their own fork of slicer called Prusa Slicer, which is a software that used for printing 3D printers. Um, they also have, make their own filament, and w because they control the, not only the hardware but also the software and the filament, they can really make up a whole ecosystem that can allow them to replicate consistent, you know, good prints. And I think that's one people, one reason why people like it. The other part by the quality controls, the the support that they provide, which might not be as easily achieved through some of these other companies. The, the other other company that I hear a lot about in 3D printing is called Creality, and they actually make two different lines of printers. They have the Ender and the CR line. The Ender series is a, a slightly smaller, less expensive. It's a, about a $200 printer, plus minus, depending on when and where you get it. And a lot of people seem to really enjoy that printer and really, really impressed by what it can print for that, for that dollar amount. There is also the CR line of printers from Creality, which are larger, a little bit more expensive, and this Artillery Sidewinder X1 is actually based off the um, off the designs of the CR. It has the same print volume, very similar in designs. You know, most people probably would look at this and not know the difference between a CR or a um, or this uh, Sidewinder Artillery if they're sitting next to each other. So I was looking at both. You know, the Prusa and the Creality going back and forth because that's what everybody's talking about. And, you know, I, the first thing I want to point out is between these two for two different brands, I was kind of impressed because I would see some people that would actually show something they printed out on a, like a cheap $200 Ender 3, and I was fairly impressed. And then somebody would show something that they printed on like the $800 or $1,000 Prusa, and I'm like, wow, that doesn't look so great. So it seems like the overall print quality is more related to actually how well the the printer is tuned and upkept instead of just you know like the cost of itself. The cost seem to be more affected by kind of the quality of life improvements, like the parts that they have are they official, the support they provide, um, and you know does it have um, auto, like auto leveling? Does it have a direct drive extruder? Does it have um, an automatic feed runout detector? Like all these little features, you know, depending on what you're wanting, what you buy, can you really increase the um, your kind of quality of life make your prints more consistent but you know as far as the quality of the actual print um, that seems to be fairly consistent between like you know these kind of I guess a thousand or under thousand dollar bracket so that was one thing I've noticed and the second thing I noticed that you know I, when I was looking at the Prusa the Prusa for me I was I almost bought one but then I canceled the order because you know the thing that, that was bothering me most about it was the fact that it doesn't have as big of a build volume as like you know this artillery or the Creality. I was looking at the Ender 3 and the CR10 and uh, unfortunately they really didn't have like you know kind of 
all the same things or most of the things that the Prusa did. The point the point is there are two big names out there like Prusa and Creality and what I first started doing is I started focusing on that and I really didn't look at many other options until I thought really kind of eliminated um, both Creality and Prusa as you know options just because they lacked you know one thing or another that I was really looking for. It seemed like people really liked them when they came out a couple of years ago and one thing I did notice that is people kept talking about it and that talking about is kind of like almost kind of echoing each other they were ta all talking about you know how this great this printer was but no one really talks about you know new printers that came out or innovations and that was one thing that I noticed about Creality like all the printers that I was looking at I seemed to have issues finding something that really had everything that I wanted in it. It just seemed like they put together a good printer, but they really haven't done much innovation um, in the past couple of years. It seems like they've been doing a lot to try to cut costs and they make the Ender 3, which is a good printer. They really have something that, you know, that I kind of wanted, all the features and the quality of life features that I was kind of looking for. And that's one reason why I went after this Artillery X1 and I'm pretty satisfied with it. So I guess the point is, you're going to see, you're going to hear a lot of people talk about Prussian Creality, but don't hyper-focus on that. There are going to be other other companies that also make fairly decent printers and you know what was great a year or two ago might not be as good anymore because there are printers that could you know come to market which are now actually better stock than the Creality printers. The, the next point, point number two, is try to leave it stock. So I see a lot of people do this and I was almost wrapped up into this because I was looking at buying an Ender 3 and just throwing all these upgrades but honest to God the thing is you want to find a printer that meets your needs as much as you can and play with fits as stock as much as you can because you're going to hear people like oh I put this I put that on it and then people get the printer and then they throw all these upgrades on it and their printer may have may have had issues before they used it or might have been working perfectly fine and after they upgrade it they haven't really played with it much at all and got used to it then that means that they could have just messed it up or it or they just changed so many variables that it makes it harder to diagnose, especially um, community members when they try to help you diagnose your problem. If you swap so many things out, it makes it that much more difficult. If you're dealing with a lot more consistency, then that's going to be easier for people to help you um, diagnose your issues. So try to keep it stock, get comfortable with it, understand it, get it printing well. And then if you want to like, you know, prove something like I put this um, BL Touch on this, this is the only like non-stock thing besides updating the firmware that I did. So I did that because the bed was actually bowed and I'm waiting for Artillery to send me a new bed that's been RMA. It's going to take a couple weeks. But, um, you know, in order to really get it printing well, I had to um, put the BL Touch. There was no way around it because I could level it on all four sides, but the center wouldn't, you know, would be, uh, wouldn't be able to extrude it and have it touch the bed. So try to keep it stock. Point number three, avoid the bleeding edge. One trap that I see a lot of people doing is they get excited about this brand new product that's going to come out or that just came out and they, need, they immediately buy it. it printing is, is definitely an early adopter thing. And what you don't want to do is just go out and buy the, the, the first run of a, of a new printer because you could potentially, especially if you're new to it, because then you're going to be overwhelmed. You're not going to know how to diagnose it. I mean, it's one thing if you're fairly experienced and you know what to look for when there's problems, you know, where to look when there's problems, then that is one thing. But if you're a newbie, wait, you know, six months, a year even, before you go out and, you know, buy that, you know, brand new spanking printer, because printers, just like a lot of other things, will have, actually, printers, more than most other things, will probably have teething issues, and you want them to fix those teething issues, you know, after the first few production runs, that way you can get a better product that's been kind of QA'd by the community in general. So in all, just wait a few months after the product's been released before you buy it. Point number four is communities. So communities such as Facebook, Reddit, and YouTube are all great, you know, type of communities to try to to start learning about printers and doing some research. Like for example, artillery. I really didn't find a whole lot on Reddit. There, I saw some great reviews on YouTube for this printer, but uh, Facebook is where a lot of the groups are for this artillery. And I saw they were very helpful. I actually joined some of them, they're private groups, but I joined them before I actually purchased the printer. And you can actually see some of the more common issues that people have with it. And that kind of gives you an idea if you're willing to accept those problems before you buy the printer, as opposed to, you know, just being like buying a printer and then like, why isn't this working or why is it doing this way? Well, if you kind of read through, you know, what other people have done or see what other people do, kind of get their feedback, then that can give you a good idea of, you know, what to expect. 
Also, keep in mind that you're probably going to see more people like having issues with it. People are not going to upload a print every time they have a successful print. So if people are, you know, just overly negative about a printer, then that can tell you that you maybe should avoid that company or that printer. But if people have issues and other community members are saying, well, have you tried this? Can you try that? Then you can see, well, maybe this is probably a decent printer. It might have some hiccups or might have some problems here or there. But overall, if I have a problem, you know, I know I can resolve it fairly easily. So to try to make sure that if you have a printer, find community first and make sure that they exist for that printer. Then you can find some you know, nice, neat little upgrades if you want for it, like these little rollers here. That's what I, I printed these out. So that way you can put different size spools on it. And, you know, I try to keep the stock pretty much everywhere else. Um, but that's what I think the communities are really good for. Um, Reddit is another one, and then also YouTube. It's a great resource. Um, there's a lot of really good uh, 3D printing channels out there, like Teaching Tech is my favorite one. Um, he does a lot of, he does a very good job of not only reviewing, but, you know, kind of giving you guidance of, like, you know, um, how you do different things, you know, like, for example, he'll upgrade a printer that, you know, a lot of people like to upgrade, and it's like, well, this one doesn't really show any difference after the upgrade, so save your money or that, you know. So I, I really like those videos, and I I would check out Teaching Tech um, after this one if you're interested in 3D printers. Number five, you want to keep your expectations in check. You don't want to go into 3D printing acting like you can just buy, you know, this $200 into three, throw it on the desk, plug it in, click print, and it's going to print beautiful prints every day. No, you're going to actually have to, you're going to have to level the bed, you're going to have to do different little things to tune it and keep it working. Uh, you're going to have to know how to use a slicer, which isn't that difficult, you're not going to have to um, you know, know what filament you want. So there's a lot of different little things and it's it's not a good thing for somebody just to jump into and not really have a good idea of what they're doing and just come with expectation that uh, that things are going to print all well all the time. So the, the last part about expectations is with these cheaper printers definitely keep your expectations in check because you're getting a lot of print area, a lot of features for the money, but the thing is they're gonna they're cutting corners somewhere like I mean you're not gonna have official parts these this thing has dozens of clone parts so it has a volcano like um, um, nozzle which is not an actual volcano e3d nozzle there's a lot of different parts of this that are you know cloned or you know I guess you could even call counterfeit like and that's a lot with these you know cheap Chinese printers I mean they can give you a decent print but also you know you could potentially sacrificing you know quality assurance so like for example, this bed is warped a little bit. Some people were able to get the warp out of the bed by heating it up a couple times to 80 degrees after they removed the tension. Um, I tried that, and unfortunately, it wasn't that didn't work for me. So you're potentially going to sacrifice quality assurance. Nothing you might be sacrificing is customer support. For example, on this artillery um, printer, I had an issue with the bed. I said it was kind of warped. But um, I submitted an RMA. They actually got to me back to me really quickly. But they said it would take weeks, and who knows how long, especially during, the, during this pandemic, how long it would get, how long it would take for you to get the bed. You know, maybe Prusa would probably be a lot better in sending you a replacement part. So you know, your miles may vary with there. But I mean, you know, when it comes to the parts, the, the customer service, you know, you're, and also the name. So there's 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 things that you're definitely sacrificing um, when you buy a cheaper printer. But um, again, as I said, the you know the kind of the overall printer quality that I saw between different printers were fairly consistent as so long as you tune it. So if you're patient, go for it. You know, don't be don't be mad and upset that, you know, there's something wrong with it. Work with work these companies to fix it, you know, else they're going to quit making them and you'll have to buy a, a, you know, printer that's twice as much. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you tuning in. Again, I'm just really new, but I just want to kind of go over what of what I have learned. And if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments and feel free to subscribe if you want to hear more stuff like this. Thank you very much.